Hi folks and welcome to today's video, 7 top tips to manage a herniated disc. Now, I do make a lot of great content for those folks out there suffering with low back pain issues, such as sciatic nerve pain, herniated discs, bulging discs, lumbar stenosis, lumbar arthritis. If that's you, hit that subscribe button. You can be notified when we make some great new content popping up on YouTube to get you back on the road to recovery. But without further ado, let's get into today's video. So folks, today I want to go over seven top tips for you to help you manage a herniated disc. Now, one of the things I talk a lot about with clients is the fact that when you get the herniated disc, especially in the acute stages, um, it takes over your life. It really does, okay? If we have a broken arm, arm in a cast or a sling, you know, maybe a shoulder injury, broken leg, etc., we can still move the rest of our body. All right, the problem with the lower back issue is low back pain, which can lead often to sciatic and nerve pain with a herniated disc is it affects everything we do. It's at the center, it's basically our base here, okay, below our pelvis, uh, sorry, above our pelvis there. It's the center of everything we do. When you motion, any motions you move, you go to turn in bed, you sit in a chair, drive a car, it's always there and it will remind you, ow, ah, I'm in pain, yeah? It's very difficult to handle this sometimes. It's a bit of a realization to understand that this will change your life for a few months while you have to adapt to it. So this video is basically to help you give you advice on how to manage this pain from this uh, herniated disc, okay? So number one, if you've just been diagnosed with herniated disc, you've got pain, okay, perhaps a sharp stabbing pain in your spine, perhaps you've started to get some sciatic pain in your right leg, your left leg, or even both legs, okay? It might seem obvious, but I've read reports, I've heard people come and, and say to me they've done these things, stop large stressful movements, okay? If you go to the gym, if you're deadlifting, if you're squatting, if you're an active, you know, hiker, if you're an active you know, tennis player, golfer, stop, okay? In the acute stages, you're going to need two, three weeks. The pain is going to be quite, quite, quite sore, quite abrupt, okay? Um, you want to take it nice and easy. So stop those large movements, okay? I didn't say stop moving, stop the large, big movements, okay? Number two. You want to remove as many stressors as possible. What do I mean by that? Well, it's simple little things like how you put on your shoes, okay? Before you just obviously bend over, put my shoes on. Now you're going to have to think about how you move in your daily activities, okay? You may have to sit like this. You may have to bring one leg up here, put my shoe on and tie it like so, okay? You may have to put your foot on a small stool and tie it that way. You have to think about how you move your spine and adapt, okay? How you get into the car. When you're in the car, you have to put some sort of like towels wrapped up behind you here to give you better posture, okay? So you want to remove those small stressors, which will be causing you pain, but it'll give the chance for the body in a position to heal, all right? Now, along the same lines, I recommend a lot of people in the acute stages, probably the first three, four weeks, you'll want to try to avoid flexion before noon. Now, there's a video that's going to pop up at the end of this one, which we'll go into more, much more detail about it. But essentially, it's avoiding flexing your spine, which is flexing forward for the first four hours of the day. It's been studied several times in the literature. It has brought about a lot of relief with a lot of people who have had low back pain issues from herniated discs, bulging discs, all right? So number three, avoiding flexion before noon. Now, number four, might seem quite obvious, start rehab now, okay? Do what you can. Now, I know people say, I've often heard this, people come to me and say, Colin, my insurance won't kick in for a month, for two months. If it's socialized medicine, perhaps, uh, I have an experience, of course, with NHS, people in Sweden, various other parts of the world, they may have to wait months before seeing a physio. And again, it is inferred in the research what they've looked at, the longer you take to start your rehab, especially if it doesn't start within the first four weeks of your injury, it is a much longer recovery time. If you can start within that first month of the injury being diagnosed, you will recover faster. Now, you might be saying, Colin, I don't know what to do. I don't have any guides, etc." There's another video that's going to pop at the end of this one. It is my beginner's rehab video for low back pain issues, herniated discs. So stay, so stay to the end of this video, and that is going to pop up for you, all right? Now, so number four is start rehab now. Number five is, ah, oh, I don't have time. You know, it's really difficult to like to find 20 minutes, half an hour to do these uh, exercises. Okay, I want you to try to incorporate them into your day, all right? You might do one exercise in the morning before you go to work. You might have a, 
an office at work where you've got some privacy. You can do a couple of exercises during work time. People say, but I've got kids. You know, I play with the kids in the evening. Okay, make it a game with the kids, right? You're going to follow along with mom, with dad. We'll do this exercise together. Get your kids involved and then they're going to like be obviously playing with mom and dad or mom or dad, right? And you're going to be able to actually do the work. It's okay, you can always find time. It's just about how you adapt, how you modify your day to fit it into your day. All right. So number five is incorporate that rehab work into your day. Now, number six, actually, uh, number six, you want to change up your workplace. Now, I know many people will be like, ah, oh, but you know, I sit all day. I, I work all day. I'm a delivery driver. Da da da. It goes back to adapting. All right. Do you have the chance of getting a standing desk? That might be of assistance. Do you have the chance to get a much more ergon ergonomically designed chair to support your back? Great. Can you take a, a fireman I was working with for a little while? He was able to take some leave off and he got put into like the office section, like he was doing sort of more paperwork, admin logistics work. He didn't have to be on active duty. Okay. Don't be afraid to share your problem with your employer, with your boss. Okay. Most of them, most of them <laughs> should appease and should be willing to help you out. All right. You may have to take some, you know, time off as well, you know, sick time, whatever, to get yourself back on track. So guys, number six, please adjust your workspace as much as you can to adapt, especially in that acute stage, first three, four weeks, whatever. You want to get that body in a good place to start the healing process. Okay. And number seven, seven. <laughs> The final one, make sure you record what you're doing when it comes to your exercises, walking, other activities, okay? You want to create a journal and you want to include things in there, for example, how long I slept, you know, how long you slept, how long you slept, um, was it a stressful day at work, what was my stress levels, okay? What exercises did I do? Um, you know, did I fight with the wife? Did I fight with the kids? Did I fight? Was there some other stress issues? Okay. Because what you'll start to do is you'll start to see patterns. You'll see when your pain is less and perhaps when the pain is more. And you can start to identify pain triggers. Perhaps it's when you take out the rubbish, take out the garbage. Okay. You have an uptick in pain that day or the next day. Perhaps it's when you have a long drive to go, you know, to a site to go, you know, visit somebody, you have a pain uptick that day or the next day. And it's learning what those pain triggers are, because then you can work around them. But also by recording your workouts, you will see progress. Because I have many people come to me saying, Colin, I've had this pain for six months, five months, and I, I, I just can't get any better. I don't see progress. And then we go back into their history and see where they were four or five months ago, and they actually have made progress. But because they've not been recording it, they can't see it. They, they, they only live in the moment of the pain they have at that time. By recording down repetitions you do, the exercises, etc., you can see, oh, hey, I did 10 reps on Monday. I did 12 on Wednesday. Okay, that's two reps more. Was that 25, sorry, 20% extra. Yeah, that is progress. I worked, I sorry, I worked. I walked an extra five minutes this week. Fantastic. Okay. These are the things you want to be recording down because that's going to give you some data to see you are actually getting your old life back. Okay. Now I know it can be a scary time when you're first diagnosed. As I said, guys, go check out the two videos. There's the rehab program for beginners and there's also the one about avoiding flexion before and they're going to pop up in just a few seconds for you to go check it out. Now, if you are out there, you've just been diagnosed, you're struggling with your own back pain issue, feel free to reach out to me, okay? I do do a free advice call, 45 minutes, give you some great things to try. Um, if you want to work with me directly, you can also hit me up on the email, ask me questions, email or the comment section, comments in this video, comment down below, it's not a problem. I help as many people as I can. I do get back to you, sometimes it takes me five, six days, maybe a week sometimes, pretty busy, okay? But I do answer everybody. All right, guys, listen, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe, and I'll see you next time. Have a great day.